We're gonna be the new Midnight Express. I feel like LAX does not get the credit it deserves. In the confident level, I feel we are top 10 tag teams in the world. What's it yeah, like man. being a traveling wrestler? It's amazing. Every country, every city, it's a blessing. What was your experience in the Impact? I loved it. Your second run with LAX, it was like LAX new versus LAX OGs. My day is almost done, so I feel that somebody needs to take over. And I think those guys are the perfect guys to take over. I'm Steve Fault, but on today's edition, I am talking to Homicide. How are you doing today? Thank you, Steve, for having me for the show, bro. Ooh, I feel so good. I felt it in my soul when you did that. Thank you so much for being here because, honestly, this is a privilege. Like You have been everywhere, it feels like. We were just talking off camera. You just got back from New Zealand. Uh, what's it yeah, like man. being a traveling wrestler going from company to company, from country to country? It's amazing. You know, like I'm living the life. I'm learning different cultures, every country, every city. Man, it's a blessing, and I can't complain. I've been doing this for 28 years, and it's even better. <laughs> 28 years? That's feeling good. I like it. I like it. Like a fine wine. But there's so much to talk about with you because you're involved with New Japan Strong. You know, you had a huge run in Impact with LAX. So let's start with LAX because it's one of my favorite tag teams of all time, and I'm always – I talked to Hernandez recently about this, and I'm glad I have you in here now as well is because I feel like – LAX does not get the credit it deserves. It was one of the greatest tag teams in the past 20 years, but yet it seems to be left out of conversations when it comes to the top 20 tag teams of the past, you know, 20 years. Why do you feel like that's the case? I'll be honest with you, I really don't know. I think we should kiss ass out. I'm not asking ass I love, I love my company. I love the boys, but I'm not a yes man. I don't know if that makes sense. LAX should be on that list. I mean, we're talking about a name that is still getting mentioned for all these years, what we did. Alex was born in, I think, late 2005 with Conan, myself, and there's another gentleman named Apollo. We had a lot of changes, and I guess we had the jackpot with Hernandez, and we just took over the tag team industry. And we had a lot of battles with Big Money, Team 3D, you know, the list go on and on and on. And yes, we should be on that credit. But I'm very thankful for yourself for that knowledge that people sees that. Not the political parties mm -hmm. out there in the rest of business that feels like, well, they should be like maybe top 100 of all tag teams. And the confident level, no ego, I feel we are the top 10 tag teams in the world. But... That's my opinion. Well, I agree with your opinion because if you look at the history of professional wrestling, when Impact Wrestling was on top, you know, of doing really well, the WWE was the other option, and I guess you had New Japan and AAA as well. But in reality, there was no how people compare AEW to WWE now. It was Impact Wrestling and the WWE. And the fact that people are going to forget a, like a whole span of history just because AEW showed up really, I feel like, is insulting to the work of all the Impact wrestlers who put so much work into the company. But I also talked to Hernandez about this. Was Jim Cornette a big supporter of LAX? Because it seemed like he was a big supporter of Hernandez. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What did I do? I'm a shooter, and I keep it real. I like Jim Cornette. I like him. And, yes, he is a supporter. He might get mad at me because of TV, blah, 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 one-on-one -on -one wrestling. But um, I got a feeling Jim like us. And this was smoking my wrestling. And even the old school, the NWA, we had a time machine. We go back to 86. We're going to be the new, new, new Midnight Express. But it will be the Latin America to change. Oh, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would love it. I, I would love that so much. But what was your experience like with working the Impact? Because, again, you were a champion. Uh, it seemed like in, uh, every time you got an opportunity, you'd win the exhibition title, the tag team title. Like, what what was your experience like? Because I've talked to other people, and their experiences are completely different, positive, negative. But what was yours? Well, mine was very positive. I loved it. You know, first of all, I'm a national television with the name Homicide. 
I want people to know what homicide means. You know, like it's a very graphic, not a remarkable name for national television or Spike TV. But, you know, well, it is what it is. But in the very positive things, I love Impact. I feel like that's one of my homes in wrestling. I mean, we had JoJo Pro back in the days. We had Ally Day. We had Ben Dependency Doghouse. We also had Ring of Honor. I was one of the originals of Ring of yep. Honor. Tina Impact, that's my home too. I loved it. Um, Man, I met so many people, legends, future legends. Guys in the WWE right now who I think should be world champion like Bobby Roode, but that's a different story. But yeah, man, I had a, a terrific time in TNA Wrestling. Now, the end days of Impact, well, when me and the Andes came back, that's a different story. Hmm. But when it comes to like negative and positive, very positive. I love Impact TNA. I had a blast working with the boys. I love their staff. I love my boss, and <laughs> so I can't complain, man. I loved it. So you, but I, I enjoyed it too. Obviously, as on camera, you and Hernandez, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, what an incredible matchup. That really, I think, kickstarted the LAX storyline and kept it going because I believe you even tried to burn a flag on TV and it was disgusted, and they were like, ah. Uh, I don't know about doing this on national TV. You said homicide. They also had a character named Suicide as well. Yeah, so. exactly. Hey, I, 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 another story. Do you like horror flicks? Uh, I like them a little bit. I don't want to watch them all the time to be too scared. Now, do you like the Dapper Elm Street for the Cougar? Oh, yeah, of course. Now, he's a pedophile, but he's the most popular horror flick ever. True. I don't know about that. I hate pedos. Like... Another story, we had a team called the Hit Squad. That's the last story in prison. Yeah. But my point is character. You think I was very uh, enjoyable doing that? No, man. I got a lot of friends who was down with the Marines and Vietnam vets. And, hey, it's a character. You know, just like Freddy Cougar. I love Freddy Cougar, but I don't like it the way he is in real life. You know, but... It is what it is. It's funny you bring that up because often I, even myself, I'll, I forget the backstory of Freddy Krueger. And then you started t- saying it. I was like, oh, yeah, he's right. Yeah. Like, it's coming <laughs> out of the <laughs> like, oh, wow. That <laughs> uh, was well, the first movie. Eventually, he's just like on a uh, on a talk show in one of the movies and he's like dancing and singing. And it's very bizarre that you would think of the backstory of how we got there. But, uh, you know, Undertaker, one of the most beloved characters as well, uh, you know, someone who's Trying to kill you and put you in on the off days, build caskets to put you in. Look at the guys, the House of Black, a bunch of dead worshippers, but I bet you they're the the best, honest teddy bears in the world. Of course, of course, I I, I have to agree with that. Though you you alluded to it, for I, I want to talk about it for a second. So your second run with LAX, when it was you, it was like LAX new versus LAX uh, OGs. Why was that situation so awkward for you? Well, I didn't mind that it was my boys. You know, the company wants to make it a playbook like the Midnight Express, Mr. Midnight Express in the 80s. I was fine with that because I feel like we can make great business in the future. But I really think it made a left turn. And I think it was one of those, like, I need to help these guys to beat the new LAX and me and then just be out, out the window. In my personal opinion, I said in my social network, I ain't did it for impact. I did it for them. I want them to them to be the new LEX, and I'm happy that I did that. Some people disagree. Some people, especially my partner, they like it. But hey, man, it is what it is. Like I said, they're my boys. I mentioned those guys. I want a new, fresh LEX, just like the Miller Express. Yeah. And like I said, I felt that it was me, not Impact Wrestling. They felt that it was there. No, it was me. It was all me. Interesting you say that because, yeah, for years, no one really knew the story of what happened there. And also you bring it up where you're doing what a lot of wrestlers in the past, you know, uh, Ric Flair or Terry Funk, you know, you lose. Like Harley Race losing to Ric Flair in a steel cage match, you know, made Ric Flair kind of like the man and without exactly. without people like that a veteran losing to someone who is coming up well how does someone come up if you don't beat people who are credible 
Exactly, especially those two two kids. I mean, they came from the same neighborhood. Um, they went through a struggle. I love their power. I love their respect, the loyalty. So it's about the time they should carry the flag. My day is almost done. You know, so I feel that somebody needs to take over. And I think those guys are the perfect guys to take over. Like, I feel there will be no future. There will be no homicide if there's no future. We need a future. If there's no future, there will be no homicide. So, the so San- of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Ortiz and Santana eventually joined AEW, and then they had a great run, but never were tag team champions. And then everything's kind of fizzled out for them on AEW TV, at least. And, and, and so, what you did help them get to somewhere else, but then you know it's up to the company, obviously, to take those characters and utilize them. And if they don't utilize them, your work might not be as impactful as you'd obviously want it to be. But it did because it got them a job there. Aligned with Chris Jericho, had a great, you know, two-year run there doing their thing. So, obviously, you know, it worked out for them. But we'll see what happens next for them because I I, I love that tag team just like how I love. Yeah, people still remember them. It's not like oh, you yeah. leave and boom, nobody. People still remember O.T. Santana. Right now, they're going through some difficult times, personal, personal life, because we are human. Yep. <laughs> we, yeah. we do our lives outside the rest of the world. And that's what they're going through. September 2021, 20, uh, though, you showed up on AEW TV. You saved Moxley and Eddie Kingston. And how did this deal come to be? Did Tony Khan or his people reach out to you? Eddie Kingston hooked us up? I was surprised, man. I just came to see the boys. I wanted to visit. You know, I came to work or not, and... And last officer, Mark Stanley had a kiss it, surrounded me like they was about to attack me and say, you're going to do something today. I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I'm here to visit the boys. you doing something. Let go of the argument. It's crazy. <laughs> then Tony Khan like, stepped to my office. And he told me a couple of things. He, he showed me some numbers. So I was like, okay, I do it. <laughs> you know, and. It was phenomenal. It didn't hit me when I went to the ring. It hit me afterwards because I'm a big New Yorker. I love Frank Sinatra, and that's what they play after the show. And I'm like, amazing. That's when it really hit me, you know, because I'm a very humble person when it comes to the rest of the business. I'm no diva. I'm just, I just keep it real. You know, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy that people hook me up. I do the same thing back to them. And in Queens, New York, and the big show, man, it was it was a blast. Especially guys that I'm doing running on Suzuki, who's one of my heroes, and Les Archer, who's also the biggest man in professional wrestling. And they finally got Moxley and one of my best friends, Eddie Kingston. So it was, man, it was a really cool experience. A lot of people don't know this. I've been joking around. I'm like Rick Rude. I don't know you if you remember. He went to WWF. He left. They don't see WCW. It was the same night. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh yeah. I did the same thing. So basically, get the air rampage on the Wednesday, but they aired they aired it on Friday. And I wrestled Minoru Suzuki at GCW in New York. So I was at basically fighting Suzuki and on TV at the same day at the same night. That's so. <laughs> That's crazy because that list is short. Like there recently, there's been a few other women wrestlers who pulled this off. Uh, Kayla Sparks is one that comes to my mind, but yet uh, recently on SmackDown, another one did as well. Rampage, and then it was on SmackDown. Same exact thing for you. You know, you're pulling a Rick Rude. There's only like, I could probably count on, on one hand how many people have appeared on two wrestling shows at the same time. I think Kenny Omega did the same thing. Uh, he was on yeah. Impact, and he was in AAA fighting uh, Andrade. So yeah. So, yes, I guess it's five people in my brain that have yeah, ever pulled this off. I was one of them, but I like to say I'm blessed. I'm so, I'm so humble about it. It's, <laughs> it's it, crazy. In the crowd, too, when the, you showed up, you know, I assume some wrestlers feel like when they're, before they walk out that, oh, did everyone remember me? Is everyone going to forget me? Are they don't even uh, Crickets. You don't want to hear crickets. I when did the same they, thing. They, po- they popped. Was, yeah. yeah, he was yelling at me because then he calls me the kingdom of the no, I'm not. Stop saying that. Nobody's going to remember me. He got so mad at me. And when I went out there, he just was like, I told you so. He did the Bobby the Brain Handy picture. <laughs> so, 
man, man, it was awesome. It was cool. That's awesome. So after that event, though, it was clearly it was by accident. You went to go visit some people, and boom, you're on TV and paid. Was there an option or an opportunity to continue working with AEW after that event? Um, I never asked them what's going to be the future that I'm coming back. It never was like that. You know, like, basically, I came to a couple of shows. I was winning. Um, nobody spoke to me about anything. Um, I did tell them, could I be in dark? And they're like, we're not going to this special like that. I don't know what that means. But I was like, look, man, I don't mind. And they're like, nope, we're not doing that to you. You know, and like I said, man, I don't like nobody calling me the King of New York or a legend. Because I feel I'm not. But that's what they was telling me. Like, you're a legend. We cannot give you uh, all the rest of the dog and YouTube. You deserve better. Look, I appreciate and thank you, but I don't mind. And like I said, man, um, I was waiting, waiting, and waiting. And one day I went to Seattle. And I'm not a religious person, but it's almost like God is telling me, hey, man, Nobody's going to sign you. I appreciate what you got right now. And that's what I did. And everything will start hitting me. And I just followed the advice, you know. But nobody ever spoke to me. But the cool part, my favorite part, is the boys in the company saying, why you not here? Mm. And to me, that's, the, that's amazing. I don't care what anybody say. Like, people... And the ass I were in that company is saying you should be here. Why the hell are you not here? I don't know. Talk to your boss. I don't know. But I'm not looking for nobody right now. I'm very happy where I'm at right now. I was looking for people. Like, my goal was Massacre Garden and WWE. That didn't turn out great because I guess my age is coming up right now. I'm getting a little older. I'm like on my Logan right now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Did it ever, when the LAX was like on top, was there ever someone reaching out being like, hey, when's your contract up? Because it seemed stupid not to. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. Nobody reach. And I, right now, I'm, I'm older. I should be, I want to say bitter or angry. I should be like very like, hmm, like what's the deal? Like mm -hmm. why this? Why that? But. Yeah, nobody, nobody contact. The only person that contacted me was Mick Foley when I was in the Ring of Honor. And he gave me a number, called the office, let them know that you should come in here. Because I, LAX, LAX was about an Hispanic character like the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. but that Hispanic way. And I had every race in my hand. I'm trying to get to every race to love basic people, the world, everything. You know, it's not about one race. It's about everybody. Yeah. We all together. That's why I am, you know. And make for love that. You know, I wrestled Cole Cabana. I had people wrapped around my finger like an MC in a good way. Yeah. And um, they told me, you need to go to the WWE. But Conan told me, you need to go to the TNA. And I picked TNA because the travels, you know, but... I think that was maybe the first and the last time that somebody hooked me up. Now I just, just get respect. Like a lot of people saying, oh, homicide is great when it comes to like wrestling and mine. And I really appreciate that. And nobody ever, ever give me like a hookup or telling me, you should, you should do a tryout or produce a job. Nobody. It was other companies like NWA, New Japan, they're the ones who that was giving me the ball, and I'm gonna run it. Yeah, no, I, I there's a few people I believe that I'm shocked that like, for instance, like you, Hernandez, Amazing Red, and the Briscoes are like five people that I was always shocked that like at least never had a chance in the WWE. It, it may again, maybe it's their perspective of who you are. I have no idea. I don't work there, but those are the five people always in my brain of the past, you know, 15, 20 years of like. Really? They didn't even get a chance. Even Cole Cabana got a chance. Like, and yeah. I love Cole Cabana. It's like, but they didn't, you know, they changed him a little bit, obviously. And, and I'm just shocked that never was the case for you. R really shocked.